Today we're going to be talking about five rules to be a great wide receiver. All right, so rule number one, you need an efficient stance off the ball. So what is an efficient stance and what do some wide receivers, what are some of the mistakes wide receivers make with their stance? So the stance that I like to teach is something called 90-90. And we'll talk about the reason why I like this, but let me explain it first. So you want to try to have a 90 degree angle with your front leg and then a 90 degree angle with your back leg. The reason why is I feel like when you have 90-90, you're going to have some decent amount of weight onto your front foot and you'll just be able to explode straight up into the route and go get up into your route without wasting any steps or wasting any time. So some of the mistakes that I'll see wide receivers make is they'll be in a 90 degree angle with their front foot, but their back leg is almost extended. So the problem with that is that it's very hard for you to just explode straight out. So a lot of guys will take a false step, then go, and that false step wastes time with your quarterback. It makes it easier for a DB to make a play. So I say 90-90. Now a lot of guys will be too tall. They'll stand really tall in their stance. Now the problem with that is that if you're faced with a press coverage DB and maybe you have to get lower, you're not going to be as comfortable. So I suggest every single time, 90-90 in your base, try to have a decent amount of weight onto your front foot so you don't take a false step and you can just explode and get up into your route. Now before we get into rule number two for wide receivers to be great, fellas, if you are a receiver or even a quarterback and you would like to train with us this offseason, I myself and my staff of coaches are going to be coming out to 15 different cities across the U.S. We're going to be hosting two-day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So guys, if you want some more information, you want to find out the different states that we're attending to see if you could sign up and train with us, check out that very first link in the description below. We are going to be coming out to San Francisco, California, Orlando, Florida, Phoenix, Arizona. Then we'll be heading out to Charlotte, North Carolina, Austin, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, Seattle, Washington, Las Vegas, Nevada, Newark, New Jersey, Birmingham, Alabama, Houston, Texas, Boston, Massachusetts, Columbus, Ohio, Boise, Idaho, and finishing it off in Los Angeles, California. So guys, if you want some more information, how you could sign up, very first link in that description below. Let's get back to this video. Now, rule number two, to be a great wide receiver, you have to be a consistent pass catcher. Guys, at the end of the day, that's the most important job for a wide receiver. Again, the route running's great, speed and agility, cutting, all that stuff is important, but if you can't finish the play, we can't have you on the field. So there are two, something I like to call trigger phrases that you guys should focus on to make you a more consistent pass catcher. A lot of times, guys aren't saying the right things to themselves. They're just going through the motions and just catching the ball. You need to figure out some way to make sure that you look the ball all the way in every single time, because that's where I would say a lot of wide receivers drop passes because they're not actually fully looking the ball in. So there's two phrases I like. Number one, pretend your eyes are a camera and try to take a photo of the ball. So what that means is that as soon as that ball hits your hands, the only thing in your line of vision is going to be this football. It shouldn't be the football in this like light pole over here. It shouldn't be like half and half. It's time freezes. You are taking a photo of the ball with your eyes. Second phrase, catch the four points of the ball. A lot of times with wide receivers, especially when a quarterback's throwing with some heat, that ball will cross their face and they're catching like the back half of the ball and the ball will go through the middle of their hands. If you could focus on catching the points of the ball and taking a photo of those points, you will be a much more consistent pass catcher and we could keep you on the field longer. Now, rule number three to be a great wide receiver is you have to block, you guys. I don't care what type of offense you're in, it's going to be at least probably 30% of all play calls are going to be run plays. So if you're a wide receiver who if only 70% of the time you're helpful to the team, you're gonna get replaced for somebody who's 100% of the time helpful to the team. Most offenses are like 60-40, 60% pass, 40% run. Some offenses maybe trade the other way, 60% run, 40% pass. So guys, that's a big chunk of the amount of plays that you're running, so you have to be an asset in the run game if you want the ball. They say no block, no rock. So there's three things that you want to focus on to improve your blocking. So first things first is let's say you got a DB who's like maybe five or six yards off and you have to block him. A lot of receivers get over anxious. They hear me say this, they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go make a highlight. I'm going to run at the guy and they're super out of control and all it takes is just one cut, dude's running around you and then he makes a tackle and you didn't do anything. So you got to make sure that you're under control. So you go at him. I want to be super under control with my base, but Tip number two, keep your feet active. You don't want to be under control and have dead feet because then all it takes is one quick move and the guy's around you. So keep your feet active, approach him under control, and then when you get hands on the DB, keep your feet active as well so you can drive him back and be more consistent with your run blocking. Now rule number four to be a successful wide receiver is have a plan off the line of scrimmage or as you're walking up to the line of scrimmage based on two things. So when I say have a plan, that means have a plan for your route. You should be thinking, okay, I'm going to set up this DB with my feet. I'm going to be working 
using this on my route, I'm be working this type of stem, whatever the case may be. Have a plan of action. Don't just walk up there and then just go run your route. So I'm gonna give you an example of an actual planned out route scenario that I work with all the wide receivers that I train that you guys should take home with you. So let's say this is the line of scrimmage and let's say that orange cone is the DB. Quarterback's lined up over to the left. Let's say I have to run a 10 yard corner route. DB's lined up, outside shade, press coverage. So the reason why he's outside shade, and this is what you gotta look for, you gotta look for two things. His leverage, so is he outside, right in front of you or inside, and then the distance. Is he a yard away, is he right up on the line, is he five yards away, whatever it is. But that's how you structure your plan. So he's outside shade about a yard away, I gotta run a 10 yard corner. I don't wanna be that guy that just forces it to get out of him, because his leverage is don't let me get to the outside. His job is to not get beat to the outside. So if he gets hands, he's gonna squeeze me to the outside, I'm not gonna have any room to run my corner. So what I gotta do is I gotta take the inside release, but I wanna make him think I'm going outside with some type of move to move him and work to the inside. That's how we gotta think, you guys. Okay, his leverage is this, his distance is this, because this is what changes the release. If he's right up on the line, my release is a little bit flatter. If he's a yard away, I gotta close space with him. So it's based on leverage and distance, and that's how you structure your plan. Now I'm thinking, okay, inside release, I'm gonna try to stack him where he's running behind me, give him a move at the top, or maybe he's right on my hip, I gotta react, swat, and slip under. So guys, you have to have a plan of the off the line of scrimmage based on the DB's leverage and the distance he has from you. Now also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and you guys would like a daily workout schedule that you can follow to work on most of the concepts that we're discussing in this video, check out that second link in the description below for our ultimate wide receiver training package. Guys, it's eight weeks of daily field workouts, gym workouts, all broken down like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're doing this with the exact sets and reps to follow and a video example of each drill and exercise. So guys, if you want some information on that, check out that second link in the description below. Let's get back to this video. Now, rule number five to be a successful wide receiver is you have to understand timing with your quarterback. So what do I mean by timing? So guys, every single play, a quarterback has a specific drop and something called a progression. A progression is where he is going from read to read. So let's say as a wide receiver, you're running a slant, and let's say the slot receiver is running like, for example, a corner. So if you're running that slant, chances are you're the first read. The corner would be the second read. So he's looking at the slant, wanting to throw it, if it's covered or the defense does something, then he moves on and throws the corner route, right? So as a wide receiver, I need to understand that on that slant, I am a first read. That means I need to get off the ball fast. So if I'm doing a release, I don't wanna come off the ball, be super slow, give a move and go. I gotta go because he's looking at me first. So it'd be something quick, like a quick jab and then I'm up into the route. Now, let's say I'm backside. Let's say the quarterback is looking left. Let's say the other outside receiver's running a slant, slots running a corner, and let's say you're running a dig, but the quarterback's going slant to corner to dig. That's not a real passing concept, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. That dig could be maybe a little bit slower pace because you're the last read on the play. So you have a little bit more time to work your route. You don't want to get there too quick because that could screw up the quarterback's read. So guys, you have to understand timing to be a successful wide receiver. 